Hi and welcome to winemastery.co.uk. My name is John Lightford and this is... John Murphy. We're going to talk to you about no sugar added, carbohydrate free wine, fantastic wine if you're on a diet and you just want to spoil yourself. You've been a good girl, good guy and you just want to spoil yourself. We're going to talk to you about that in one second. The wine is called Il Bianco. Il Bianco, okay. Well, it's probably, it's, I'm, I'm, now, I'm now concerned that I've, I've mispronounced it, but it, it's, you can see it coming up here and, and you'll see, see the label there. So um, this was kindly sent by Slim Wines. We've uh, reviewed uh, their sparkling Chardonnay and Pinot. Very nice it was too. Uh, and they said, oh, you want to try others? We've got some great, great, great wines in our range. So they've sent us six of uh, the wines that they produce. So uh, this is the first we've tasted, I'll say apart from the first one. Um, and uh, it's their, their white, El Bianco. I believe it's made um, in um, Italy. I'm sure it's made in Italy. It's got Chardonnay grapes in it and it's got Savion Blanc grapes mm. in it. So it's a nice little mixture. You, I would hope that the Savion Blanc will give it that little bit of zist, while the Chardonnay will give it that little bit of softness. Okay, well that, that sounds very well informed there, John. It's, uh, yeah, that, that's what you'd hope for. Sauvignon and Chardonnay, I, I'm trying to think. I cannot think that I know of a Chardonnay Sauvignon blend that we have tried before. I can't think of one, no. no. Not knowingly, anyway. Mm. Okay, all right. Okay, let's go for it. Let's give it a go. So on the colour, it's very pale. Very, very pale. pale, very pale mm. straw. But yes. Very, very, very pale, isn't it? Yeah. That's not that's a bad thing at all. No, no. It looks fresh, looks clean. Yeah, yeah. So let's get straight on to the tall nose. The nose. Wow, that's punching that, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. It's got a... Um, quite, it's quite interesting, that one. Yeah. I, I'm get, I'm, do you get bubble gum? I'm not sure bubble gum is more, I, I mean, I'm getting a kind of floral thing there. Yeah. Mm. Pear? Pear drops? Pear, massive pears and peach, peachy pear. A peachy pear. Peachy pear. Oh, oh I, I love, love that. Right <laughs> 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 uh, but no, yeah, your pear, the pear is the predominant, and, or, the, or the massive one in there that really takes over, which is nice, it's, it's very nice. It's quite, think, it smells quite sweet, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that might be that what you're thinking of the bubble gum. I think that might be that. Yeah, because they used to do, when I was a kid, they probably stopped it about 50 years ago. But when I was a kid, they used to do sort of like a, a bubble, normal bubble gum, and they used to do a fruity bubble gum, and this is, that's the bubble gum I was thinking of. Uh, what would, what is the normal bubble gum? Uh, the, the, the pink one. Okay. And this one was an orange one. How long ago really was this, John? I don't think I've ever seen it. Um, it was probably 50 years ago. Okay. And perhaps 55. <laughs> right. And I can still keep, remember the taste. You can, I'll keep an eye out for that. Speaking of the taste, that is a... Um, Shall we have a little taste? Yeah, I think so, because that's coming across really well. Mm. I'm going to have to say for me, John, the flavour doesn't come through quite so much on the palate as it did on the nose. On the nose, I was getting lots of that beast and you know, I was expecting that pear in there, uh, maybe that bubblegum, uh, but it doesn't really come through. It's very, very light, very, very delicate. I was expecting a bit more bite and punch about it, and but perhaps yeah, a bit more it, length. There's not quite the correlation between the mm. nose, and, and you're right, the taste is a lot milder. A lot softer in taste than the nose. I, I was expecting it to be full on when I hit the palate. Mm. Um, so, I mean, it is refreshing. It's light. Yeah. And and you know, accepting that they've obviously presumably they're they're having to make um, potentially a few compromises in terms of, um, uh, you know, the ca the carbs and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Again, if we're going back to this kind of, um, you know, I must admit. To as, as, as we speak, I'm on a bit of a diet at the minute, so I'm Are trying you? to... I am. I'm trying to... Well, I, I you would have known, John, that a year ago, just before all this, I, I was in a show, the Full Monte, and I had to trim down, had to trim down for that because we had to get naked on stage. And it's just about a year ago since we did it, and so you see these pictures from a year ago, and I really have to address it. So I'm actually, you know, I'm trying not to drink wine through the week. Really? So I know, I know it's difficult. That's Being a I'm, wine merchant, that must be difficult. I know, I try, but I fail most evenings. But I don't beat myself up about stuff. But that would be a nice little compromise for me. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I wonder also, I'm just thinking, I suppose it depends what diet you're on. Or in my mind was going there that if you're on a diet, then actually, you'd, have you noticed if you're on a diet for any length of time, your taste buds change and something that didn't taste strong before tastes strong after you've been... What, what I have been noticing is things taste delicious. Because um, yeah. I'm, I'm mainly having like salads and stir fries and things like that. Good things through the week, but at the weekend, I do what I want. And... Yeah, things just taste. I don't know whether it's the excitement, you know, it's this isn't salad, it just, you, yeah, you, you're finding everything in there. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. Perhaps, yeah. Mmm. Okay. So, what we, could you pair anything with this, do you think? Well, I think it would have to be, like we said, a very light salad, because I don't think it's going to take, you know, that'd be awful, it's not going to take much on that. No, and, um, and I guess, you know, not all wine is designed to pair with. No. Um, uh, with, with food, some of it is designed just to enjoy it on its own. And yeah. You have to say it's nice and light. So if it's a hot summer's day, um, you know, and you're outside and, and you wanted something refreshing, uh, chilled down, this would be really refreshing, light, uh, and uh, I'm sure would would help quench your thirst. Oh yes. Um, so in terms, of, we're saying that we really couldn't pair anything with it. I, the score. So obviously, with it's difficult to score in terms of a Chardonnay and Savion Blanc mm. blend. Um, What's the price, John? Uh, the price is around about, I think, around about nine pounds. Okay. Okay, for the score then. Do you want me to go first? Do you want me to go first? I don't know if I want you to go first. We said one time we're going to have to write these down before and after, so because we've hit each other with nail on the head sometimes. Right, go on. That I, I, I'll let you go. Okay, I'm. I'm going to say uh, that this is a 68 for me, and part of that scoring is that it doesn't actually, for me personally, trigger all of the things that I like in a, a, a wine. Like it's slightly crisper, a little bit more full, uh, full bodied. But that, as I say, is my personal preference, and that's why I'm dragging it down. If I was scoring it on the nose, however, I, you know, it, I, what I expected on the nose, I would have put it up. Uh, into the sort of uh, mid to higher 70s, but no. Very, very close, John. I was 67. Yeah? 67. And again, you know, only because... It's, it's a tough one. It's not it's not a wine that I would, would personally go for, uh, only because it doesn't have the power of flavour to back itself up. Like you were saying there, John, that nose were brilliant, and you're going, I thought, if you could have done that, yeah, but it just didn't for me, so... Mm. Although it's a, a lighter kind of... A lighter drink for me no no and I guess if you're also you're gonna be I think actually on these uh, if, if you're now on a diet it's probably unfair on the wines that we're, we're tasting because you are going to be you know if you're breaking your diet you're going to be really quite critical of wines whereas uh, mm. when you're drinking you know yeah hmm. <laughs> on an ordinary day. <laughs> on an ordinary day. Okay, well, conclusion um, is, would I buy this myself? No. Would I buy it for some friends that I know? Actually, there are some friends I would buy it for, and I think they'd enjoy it. So, you know, it is always down to your personal taste. What about you, John? Would you buy it? Same. I think it'd be nice to have one in, in the fridge, wouldn't it? Just so you could offer it. Uh, but personally, you know, I, I wouldn't because... I don't feel I need. I'm quite happy, but um, but yeah, if, if I knew, and we always know someone who's always on a diet. Yeah. Um, so that would be perfect. It's it's always good to have one in stock. Absolutely, and yeah, and you know, if someone's on a diet, and you say to someone, "This has got no carbs in it," I'm sure that, and they've not had wine for maybe a couple of months, they'd bite your hand off for it. So, excellent. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. Well, we've got another five of these uh, to try, so look forward to tasting those. Um, but in the meantime, if you've got any questions, comments below, let, let, them, let us have them below. Uh, until then, we look forward to seeing you next time. Chin chin. Chin chin.